So uh, we're going to get into what I'm going to call part two from last week. I chuckled a little bit as I was out in the lobby on Sunday morning helping to set up for Father's Day for our after-service uh, fun. And I heard Pastor Nate say that you got mommed last Wednesday. Did y'all hear him say that? I chuckled. I don't, I don't anticipate any momming tonight. Uh, <laughs> But I do, I do anticipate um, the Word of God gaining entrance into our hearts and our lives being changed and elevated from faith to faith, from glory to glory, from, uh, from a band-aid to wholeness. Glory to God. Glory to God. So I want to read Isaiah 50. Five, eight and nine, probably a familiar verse, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. <clears throat> How many of you have ever read that and thought, Well, that's true. His thoughts are higher than mine, and you know, poor. Poor pitiful me, and his ways are higher than ma mine. And uh, but you know what? He didn't keep them a secret. So it's not that just his thoughts are higher than ours, and our ways are high, and his ways are higher than ours. I got real tickled actually. I I listened back to some of the message last week, and I said about four things backwards. How did y'all not laugh? Let's see. I had God obeying me. Uh, I don't know, there were a couple of other things, but you know, hey, we'll just all laugh together and one day God will call you to preach and then we can laugh at you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So God's thoughts and his ways are higher than our thoughts and ways, but bless God forevermore, that doesn't mean that he, uh, that he wants us living not knowing what his thoughts are. <laughs> he wrote his thoughts down for us. He wrote his thoughts down for us. Amen. So if we're ignorant of his thoughts, then that means we're not attending to his word. Is that right? Uh, if we're ignorant of his ways, he wrote his ways down for us. And so if we're ignorant of his ways, then we're not attending to his word. Now, uh, as I said last week, we all, have to be, uh, we all have to be taught. Amen? Praise God for the local church and the body that he's called us uh, to be planted in because that is the purpose of the church, the equipping of the saints. Amen? And so we have to be taught. Sometimes we're ignorant of it. Um, and then sometimes we're rebellious of it. Amen. Psalms 86, 11 says, Teach me your way, O Lord. I'm going to um, do a quick recap on some of it, hopefully move into, into other things. But Psalms 86, 11 says, Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk and live in your truth. Direct and unite my heart solely and reverently to fear and honor your name. I believe with all my heart, I, I just in, in what God is doing in us and among us, that there is a reverential awe of the Lord being restored in this house. Amen. Psalms 25, 9 says, He leads the humble in what is right, and the humble he teaches his way. So again, we see the qualification for being taught his way, don't we? And it is humility, right? Humility being a teachable spirit. Humility not being a know-it-all. Humility is the farthest thing from pride. Have you ever needed to humble yourself? You know what? I mean, God doesn't God doesn't humble us. The scripture tells us that we humble ourselves. Humble 
yourself under the mighty hand of God. And he will exalt you in due time. So, so God's not going to humble you. So it is our uh, responsibility to humble ourselves. And, and the Bible tells us that it is that the humble and that position of our heart uh, that get taught the ways of God. Amen. So, his will and his ways, ways of God. We must know the ways or the roads to travel on if we are to arrive at our promise, de- uh, our promised destination. Is that right? We, we need to know the way. Not just any old road, not just any old way is going to arrive us at the promises of God. Amen. Amen. I want to um, just briefly uh, talk about this passage. This is uh, Patsy Caminetti's book. This is a, a passage that I read so frequently in our prayer group. As as we are as we are praying the praying out the plans and the purposes of God, you know, in corporate prayer, when we come together in any way, what we are doing is we are praying out God's plans and we are creating a road for the glory of the Lord to travel on. Amen. We are creating a road for the glory of the Lord. So, so there is road building, right? And sometimes when there is road building, there has to be things that are torn down. Is, is that right? And, and sometimes there are things that need to be straightened out. So, so again, if we are creating a road in prayer for the glory of the Lord to travel upon, we have to know that not just any old road will get us there. Is that right? All right, I want to read this. And it's, she was giving a natural example of road building. Uh, her father worked on a major highway, in, not her father, her grandfather, in California. So she had talked about that. And, uh, okay, this is going to say much of what I just said. But when Jesus wants to manifest his glory in a place for all to see, he needs a highway. Our voices, lifted in faith, are used not only as an avenue to receive blessings for our own selves, but also to clear a way for the glory of Jesus to be revealed and ultimately for him to come again. You may ask, how do we know when the road is finished? Well, it's when the glory of the Lord is revealed in that particular destination and all the people there are able to see it. We have some road building to do. I said we have some road building to do. God is the master planner. Before he manifests his presence in a place, he stirs in people's hearts to begin building a road to that place in prayer. He does this by planting a desire in our hearts, his desire for his glory to be revealed to the people in a particular place. So with a God-given passion, we start praying toward that destination. And every time we pray... Uh, with his direction and power, progress is made. Just because we don't get to our destination when we say amen the first time doesn't mean we stop praying or get discouraged. No, each time we pray effectively, we take and prepare more ground. Sometimes high and exalted thinking is brought down during times of prayer. Sometimes low things, even people who don't think they can do anything or who are paralyzed by ignorance or intimidation are brought up. Crooked things, things which aren't right are straightened and rough things are made smooth. So in in the case of Beyond Church, you know, there's, there's things in the spirit realm. There's deceptions, there's lies, there, there, there is religious, um, just religious mindsets that hover over particular, different particular places, you know? And so only the Spirit of God knows um, what things need to be brought down. 
So the word of God will have entrance into men's hearts. And so that's what we're doing in prayer. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. We keep praying as the Holy Spirit directs us until the road reaches its destination and the glory of the Lord is revealed in that place. Through effective prayer, we actually make the road on which the glory of God will travel. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? God's not, uh, we're not waiting on God for him to pour out his glory. We're not waiting on God. God is waiting on us. Amen. We're going to talk more about that here in just a minute. While we are thrilled with testimonies of God's glory being manifested in cities, regions, and nations, we must bear in mind that those manifestations of God's glorious presence and power didn't just happen happen. How many of you enjoy going on YouTube and, and watching, uh, watching the moves of God in different places, how the glory of God, how the healings and miraculous things were happen? How many of you enjoy doing that? So this is why we've got to say, why not here and why not now and why not us? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So that means that we can't just wait. We're not waiting on God. So when we see these things, we must know uh, that it didn't just happen, that there was preparation. And the greater the glory, the greater the preparation. Without fail, each testimony of God's glory has had pioneer road teams that diligently and persistently prayed. Over the years, I've been a part of road teams that built roads to where the glory of the Lord was revealed. Roads building for the manifestation of God's glory is one of the greatest privileges I have known in my life. The majority of road work is not done in front of the people it will affect. It is done only before God and for His glory. We know, this is what I'm going to end on, and I'm not even teaching about prayer tonight, but it seemed applicable, the ways of God. We know generally that God wants to manifest his love and glory to all people and accomplish mighty works for them. But the roads to reach those people are not just general. If you want to go to a particular place, you must travel on a specific road. Not just any old road will get you there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The ways of God. So I'll tell you this. In corporate prayer, in our women's corporate prayer, in our night of prayer that happens, this is what we're doing. We're road building. We're road building. We're road building for the glory of the Lord to travel on. Don't you want to be a part of that? Hallelujah. We're not waiting we're not waiting on God. God is looking for some road builders. Amen. To prepare the way. The ways of God. Glory to God. Out of that, out of that, I want, I want us to remember the ways of God. The ways of God. If I want to go to Fort Smith, Arkansas, I cannot jump on any road I want to go on and expect to arrive in Fort Smith. There is a way. Say, there's a way. And thank God he reveals his way to us. Come on now. We don't have to wonder, Lord, how do I get there? Lord, how do I get there? He reveals his thoughts to us and he reveals his ways to us. Glory to God. Glory to God. So I know I said this last week, but I'm going to mention it again about our interest level. And, and we do need to be honest here. You know, what is, what is our interest level? And, and this is so true. These are just natural things uh, that, that I'm going to say. But you know, when we're sitting under the preaching and the teaching of the Word, and we're fiddling, we're fiddling with our phone, we're fiddling. 
other than taking notes, but you know what I mean. It, if we're not showing interest, the Holy Ghost knows that. Right? Uh, so we don't want to be duped into, into uh, believing that just because we came and sat on a chair um, that we're going to benefit, that there's going to be anything added to us. I'm telling you, it matters whether we respond or not. And response has nothing to do with personality. It has everything to do with faith. It has everything to do with faith. Amen. Amen. So God knows. He knows what our interest is. You know, and I, and I heard a, a minister say this, that, uh, you know, there have been times that um, someone would be preaching and just shut the Bible. Said, uh, stand to your feet. We're going to, uh, we're going to be dismissed. Was God through? Uh, yep, God was through. Why? Because of the lack of interest in the congregation. Thinking about, I need to get somewhere. You know, we're going to go eat afterwards and, or, or whatever. Amen. That's what you call casting your pearls before swine. And God doesn't do that. If you're not interested, if I'm not interested, he, he is going to move on to find people who are interested. It's, it's the truth. So how interested are we? And I said, if, uh, thank you, Miss Janice, amen. Man, she is my faith buddy. Uh, I said, if I believe the scriptures that says that he sent his word, his word, and he healed them. If I believe Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, that says, son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your uh, eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life unto those, what's, what's the next three words? That find them. My words are life unto those that find them. Isn't that what you're wanting in your life? Isn't it life that you're wanting in your marriage, in your kids, in your family, in your finances? Isn't it life? <clears throat> Their life to those to, who find them. Who find them. That means there's got to be a level of interest if I'm hunting for something. That means it's not just going to fall on me like a ripe cherry or uh, from a tree. Is that right? means I'm going to be looking for them. But he said his words are life. Life to those who find them. Health and healing to all their flesh. So if I believe that then by crackies, <laughs> I am going to be where those words are. Come on now. I'm going to be to where those words are. If I believe that his words are life unto me, then I'm going to position myself where his words are being taught and preached. Amen. I don't take time off. There's not seasons in my life or in my family that I don't need his words of life less than I need at other times. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry, I guess that was a little bit of mom. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let's turn to Genesis 4. Mm -hmm. Wow, I really, really want to go there, but no, not so much. Sorry. Um, let's go to Joshua chapter 1. We, we may go back to uh, Genesis. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Do, you, do anybody but me have to do that sometimes to get to, get to the right book? I have had, bless the Lord. Those are helpful suckers. 
Um, all right. Joshua 1, and we're going to... Um, let's, let's go to verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and day. And night that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Are you interested in prosperity? Are you interested in having good success? Did we just read how that is going to happen in our lives? I hate looking over my glasses. I thank God that he made his word so simple. Is, is there anything, is there any of those words or any of those sentences that is over anybody's head? That you just don't understand what he's saying? No, nope, it's pretty plain, isn't it? Mona, if you want prosperity in your life, if you want good success in your life, then this is how you're going to do it. You're going to meditate on my word day and night. You're going to meditate on my word day and night. Amen. So that you can observe, so that you can know, and so that you can do according to all that is written in it. And then you're going to make your way prosperous. Amen. And then you'll have good success. So, um, so we've got to come to the, we've just got to say, okay, Lord. Um, things haven't been going so well, not been experiencing prosperity in a certain area of my life or good success. And so I see here, and we need to be honest with ourselves and just say, we have not treated the word like he instructed us to do. We, we've been meditating on other things instead of what he says. Amen. Meditating and talking. Meditating and talking. Um, <clears throat> my notes are getting butchered. Meditate. Let's talk about meditate for just a second. You can go ahead and leave that up if you want, Adam, that scripture up there. <clears throat> In the dictionary, in Webster's Dictionary, for meditation or to meditate. It means to focus one's thoughts on, reflect on, or ponder over. It implies going over the same matter in one's thoughts again and again. And the interesting thing is that sometimes we'll hear this and we'll think, how can I do that? How can I meditate on God's Word day and night? How can I do that? You know, we're meditating on something. We're meditating on something through the day. So, so we don't want to be duped into thinking that's too hard. I can't do that. So I'm just not. Truly, we are meditating. We are thinking of something all day long. Did you know worry is meditation? Worry is meditation in the wrong direction. Have you ever had something going on with another person and you were going to meet with them, you were going to go talk with them and, you know, and just try to get things worked out and such, but you get in, you get in your car and, and you start driving to go, to go meet the person and, and you think, okay, now they said this and I said this, so when I get there, if they say this, then I'm going to say this. But if they don't say that and they say this, then I'm going to say this. <clears throat> what is that? It's meditation. 
It's going over things in your mind. And so I heard this statement, I believe it with all my heart. So it's not, uh, the devil is not your problem. The devil is not my problem. He is a defeated foe. Jesus completely and totally defeated him and stripped him of all his power and all of his authority over mankind forevermore. Glory to God. So the devil is not our problem. For Christians, the problem is an unrenewed, undisciplined mind. That's right. Amen. Everybody say amen. Amen. So what we need is to develop in a renewed mind and a disciplined mind, meaning that we don't just allow any thoughts into our mind and start going over and going over and going over them. This takes practice. You know, you don't, you don't hear a message about it and then just wake up in the morning and you're 100% effective. <laughs> You know, it takes us getting up. And when we recognize this thought is not a God thought, then we have to do something with it. Amen. We need disciplined minds. Meditate. To chew repeatedly for an extended period. So we take God's word and we chew on it. And we chew on it. And we chew on it. And do you know that there are scriptures in God's word uh, that have fed you and strengthened you? Uh, Possibly years and years and years and years ago when it came alive to you. How many can say that? Amen. Do you know that that same word has the same power? I've got, I have got words, scriptures in his word uh, that brought life and strength to me so many years ago. And to this day, they still do. To this day, still hanging on to them. Still meditating on them. Still declaring them. Amen. Amen. So just because a word is ministered, um, just because you received something in the word of God, you know, one time, uh, it doesn't expire. It's still alive. It's still as powerful. It's still, if we'll hang on to it and keep meditating on it. But I'm telling you, as, as people who have walked with the Lord for, uh, for even a, a, a few years or whatnot, sometimes we get lazy in this and we think that there's another way. We think there's another road to Fort Smith. Come on now. And, and so we're talking about meditation. We're talking about thoughts. Amen. Amen. Uh, Another um, implication of what meditate means, uh, according to Webster, to chew again what has been chewed slightly and swallowed. Chew the cut. How many of y'all have heard that before? Chew it again. Chew it again. Chew it again. (coughs) Chew it again. Chew it again. Spit it out. Ah, pick it back up. Chew it again. Chew it again. Come on now. We'll get nourishment. That's what it's talking about, about meditate. That we take God's word and we think on it and we put ourselves in it. Words like, my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches in glory. My God shall supply all of my need. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My God, you're my God. You shall supply all of my need according to your riches in glory. Hey, you better go look online and you better go look at your account because uh, you've got this big bill coming up and I'm just not sure uh, if we're going to have the money. Do y'all know? These are thoughts. These are thoughts. To pull us off the words of life. To pull us off the words of life. The words that are going to arrive us in our promised land. 
Amen. Amen. So a disciplined mind. We meditate and we meditate and we chew on God's good word to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, <clears throat> and so it says, it shall not depart out of your mouth. Now, <clears throat> This is equally as important that it does not uh, depart out of my mouth because as I am, I'm, I'm talking and, and I'm declaring. Now, I'm meditating. I'm meditating by saying, my God, my God shall supply. And so as I'm meditating on it and I'm saying these words, then there's a picture of provision that comes alive right here. And so the lack, the lack that has been eating at me uh, is losing ground. Is losing ground. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. Your riches, Lord, your riches, your riches, your riches. Not what I can come up with or not what this earth can produce. Your riches. You're supplying all of my needs according to your riches. And, and so by doing this, by it not departing out of our mouth, what we're doing is we're driving the word into our spirit man. Amen. Amen. Have you ever had something come up in your life and you were trying to be in faith and it was just overwhelming? Yeah, we all have. And you know why? Because we're trying to believe with our mind. Because we're trying to believe with our mind. Faith is not of the mind. Faith is of the heart. So it's through this spiritual uh, habit, this spiritual discipline of not allowing God's word to depart from our mouths. The more that we say it, the more that we're meditating on it, the more that the words are coming out of our mouth, it drives it into our spirit man where faith is. And so there is a time if we will do what the scripture says that when opposition comes, then that word is resident alive. The word's part of me. It's not just in my mind. The word is in my spirit. And so the word comes up and out of my spirit with the force of faith. And it accomplishes that which God sends it forth to do. Amen. He's watching over his word to perform it. Amen. Amen. So, so we don't want to find ourselves uh, trying to get in faith when opposition arises. We want to already be in that flow. We, th there are promises of God that we want deeply embedded in our spirit man. Can we get there if... if um, if we're not there when opposition arises, we can. Uh, but you know what? It's going to take time. It's going to take time. It's going to take time to build that word on the inside of us. But God is good and his mercy endures forever. But as we, as God's people, we put this spiritual discipline in place of meditating on God's word, not allowing it to depart from. Do you believe that? Do you believe meditating on God's word, not allowing it to uh, depart from your mouth, that it will cause you to arrive at good success? Is there another way? Little week. Is there another way? No. no. And we've got to come to terms with that. Just like, uh, just like uh, Cain, who, who came to, to God on his own terms and wanted God to accept him on his own terms. 
We can't do that. Even as Christians, even as Christians, there may be some embedded ways of thinking in you um, that has actually been a roadblock to the destination that you're wanting to go. But instead of just saying, I'm just waiting on God or I'm just believing God, God, you show me. You show me. I, I, I don't want to travel the wrong road. I want to be on the right road because I want to arrive in Fort Smith. And I don't want to go around the world six times before I arrive there. Amen. Amen. And, and so, and so he, will, uh, he will show us, right? Meditating. Meditating on his word. Uh, just just uh, thinking about it, that it is the first thing in our thoughts. Yeah, we interact and we go to work and we have family and we have fun. You know, it's not that we're just walking around like robots. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. No, we know that that is not what it means. But it is in the center. It's in the center of my life. In all of my activities, in everything that I do, going to work and, 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 and playing and, and having fun, it's what's in the center. It's what's in the center. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not just any old road will arrive us to the promise that we're standing on and believing God for. God has a way. God has a way. And he says, Mona, you take my word and you think on it and you meditate on it. And you know what? We get, we get really robbed when we approach it like, I know that. I've, I've heard that scripture. That's a cool scripture. But you know what? It's nowhere near a part of you. When I say that and when I think that, that word is nowhere near a part of me. I love what Mark Hankins said. He said, when, when the word is a part of you, when the word is a part of you, it'll thrill you every time. It'll thrill you every single time. So if you continue to hear things over and over and over and it's not thrilling you, then it's not a part of you. And we need to go to the Word, and we need to meditate on it, and we need to be uh, letting it come out of our lips and driving it into our spirits. Receive with meekness the engrafted Word of God. What's engrafted? It's a part of me. It's a part of me. Hallelujah. 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 So I'm going to pray, and then Landon's going to come up and, and do the announcements and, and receive the offering. Father, we just thank you tonight. We thank you. <clears throat> we thank you for your word, Father. Uh, we thank you that your words are life unto us and health and healing to all of our flesh. Father, I thank you and I magnify you for what you are doing in us and among us and through us. Father, I thank you that this place, <clears throat> this place beyond church is a place where you have placed your name. Glory to God. I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for the word that you said that people will come from the north, the south, the east, and the west, for they know that in this place they will be blessed by the Word and the Spirit too, working mightily in and through you. Father, I thank you. And we lay hold of that promise and we say, uh, <clears throat> we will, Lord, we will that the Word and the Spirit working mightily through each of us, not, not just from the pulpit, but, but from His body, from every person, the Word and the Spirit working mightily in and through your people. 
And so I thank you, Father, that you are teaching us, that you are leading us, that you are guiding us, that you are equipping us to be your body in the earth for such a time as this. You picked us. You chose us. You picked us out to be here for the greatest move of God that planet earth will ever see. You picked us. And so, Father, just with a heart of consecration tonight, we just say, Lord, we're all in. We're all in. We're all in. And we thank you, Lord, that you take us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. I thank you, Father, that in this room that there are are, are promised destinations that people have been hanging on to and believing you for. And Father, I am giving you glory and I am giving you honor that they arrive in their promised land. Glory to God. Glory to God. I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for it. You're watching over your word to perform it. We're, We're not the performer. God's the performer. The Holy Spirit's the performer. It's not up to you to perform. It's up to you and it's up to me to do what uh, this scripture tells us to do. To not let his words depart from our mouth. To meditate on it day in and day out. And then when it comes up and out of us, God himself will perform that very word in our lives. Hallelujah. Don't take the care. I think some of you have been taking the care uh, to, to perform it, to make it happen. You can't make it happen. We do our part and God does his part. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.